There were hundreds of thousands of spectators on Florida's space coast to see the Artemis 1 launch, and millions of others around the world will watch online or on TV from home. Even Vice President Kamala Harris showed up to the event, but in return for that grace, NASA has officially scrubbed Monday's scheduled launch of Artemis 1. What was meant to be the maiden voyage of the agency's massive and extremely expensive space launch system. This is definitely a major fail, not only for NASA, but also for the US after spending well over $23 billion on the rocket and years of delays. Let's learn more about why NASA scrubbed the launch and how it's going to move forward from this debacle in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Welcome back to our channel. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as well as ring that bell so you won't miss out on the next episode. Now let's get started with today's content. The first test flight of NASA's massive space launch system has had its first launch window set for Monday the 29th of August. It's difficult to overstate the significance of this mission for NASA. This will be the space agency's first launch of one of its own rockets since 2011, which was the final mission of the space shuttle. Even more significantly, this Artemis 1 mission is the first stepping stone on a path that could lead NASA along with a bevy of international partners back to the moon and on to Mars. Honestly, this is a flight test, but confidence was high in success. NASA officials said last weekend that the estimate for loss of vehicle during the Artemis 1 mission is 1 in 125. This means the agency is more than 99% confident that the SLS rocket will successfully launch the Orion spacecraft into orbit, after which in time it would fly off to the moon and remain there for several weeks, before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean after a 42-day mission in October. But, disappointingly, the fact is SLS hasn't left the ground yet. The countdown began Saturday and proceeded smoothly until late Sunday night when offshore storms with rain and lightning moved within about 6 miles of Launch Complex 39B, violating NASA's safety rules. After a 55-minute delay, the 6-hour fueling process finally got underway at 1.14 a.m. as engineers, working by remote control, began pumping 730,000 gallons of super-cold liquid oxygen and hydrogen fuel into the SLS core stage, clearing the way for another 22,000 gallons to be pumped into the upper stage. During a transition from slow fill to 10 times faster rate, sensors detected higher than allowable concentrations of hydrogen in housing around an 8-inch umbilical that delivers propellants to the base of the core stage. That indicated a leak in a quick disconnect fitting. After reverting back to slow fill and allowing temperatures to equalize across the plumbing, fast fill was restarted and this time around, there were no issues. But then another issue surfaced that engineers already were concerned about. When the core stage hydrogen tank was topped off, propellants were diverted to the four RS-25 engines at the base of the core stage to cool or thermally condition them to the ultra-low temperatures they'll experience at the high flow rates needed for ignition. A 4-inch quick disconnect fitting in the cooling system leaked during a June 20th fueling test. Like the 8-inch valve before it, the fitting was repaired during another stint in the vehicle assembly building. But Monday was the first time it was again exposed to cryogenic hydrogen at minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit. It did not leak this time around, but engine number 3's plumbing did not reach the desired temperature. That prompted additional troubleshooting, including attempts to increase pressure in the tank to boost the flow of hydrogen. That's when engineers ran into an unexpected problem. A vent valve at the top of the hydrogen tank did not operate as expected, showing signs of leakage. At that point, mission managers threw in the towel. The combination of not being able to uh, get the uh, engine 3 chilled down and then the uh, vent valve uh, issue that they saw at the inner tank really caused us to pause today. And today, uh, the team was tired at the end of the day and we just decided that it was the best to knock it off and uh, to reconvene tomorrow. So Even if the technical problems could have been resolved, we would have been no go for weather at the beginning of the launch window due to precipitation, he said. And later in the window, we would have been no go for lightning. After repeated attempts to resolve the engine cooling issue were unsuccessful, launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson called off the countdown at 8.35 a.m. EDT two minutes after the two-hour launch window opened at 8.33 a.m. Space is hard, certainly, but Monday's attempt, which NASA had promoted heavily by inviting celebrities to the launch and which included a visit by Vice President Kamala Harris, was perhaps a bit rushed. NASA needs to admit its fault. Why? 
because NASA rolled a rocket out to launch without accounting for all of the things that could go wrong. Beginning in April of this year, NASA conducted four separate wet dress rehearsal tests during which the agency aimed to fully fuel the SLS rocket and count down to T-10 seconds, ending the test before ignition of the main engines. Each of these four tests ultimately ended prematurely, save for the fourth attempt in June. However, to reach that late stage in the countdown, NASA had to fool the flight computer. During the test, a 4-inch hydrogen line, smaller than the problematic 8-inch line on Monday, had a leaky seal. To complete the wet dress test, NASA chose to mask the leak from the ground launch sequencer, the ground side computer that controls the majority of the countdown. Because of this masking, NASA could not complete the engine chill portion of the test. Had it done so, the agency may well have uncovered the problem that caused a scrub on Monday. In hindsight, therefore, NASA probably should have completed a full wet dress rehearsal before rolling the rocket out for a launch. Instead, the agency effectively attempted a fifth wet dress test on Monday, when the world was expecting a launch. Now, NASA may be rolling the rocket back to the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center anyway. Agency officials said they were leaving open the possibility of a launch attempt at 12.48 p.m. ET on Friday, September 2nd, after a meeting on Tuesday afternoon to discuss possible fixes to the engine bleed issue. Mission managers will announce a plan forward. If the rocket cannot launch by September 5th, it will need to go back to the hangar for additional work. Then, it's likely that the rocket would not launch before mid-October. All in all, the SLS rocket has turned into a massive political pain point for the space agency, and this morning's scrub is bound to only add to the sting. NASA began developing the SLS in 2011. Back then, the development of the giant rocket was budgeted at 10 billion US dollars with an expected debut voyage in late 2016. <laughs> but development costs, budget issues, design changes, political hurdles, and other bumps in the road delayed the rocket's first launch to 2017, then 2018, 19, 20, 21, and finally to 2022. That is a six-year delay here, folks. A lot has happened in space over the decade plus of SLS's development, including the emergence of commercial cargo and commercial crew missions to the ISS, the introduction of reusable rockets by SpaceX, and an exponential buildup of new private space companies. So far in 2022, there have been 37 launches from the KSC, the overwhelming majority of them conducted by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets alone. In 2016, the same year that SLS was originally supposed to launch for the first time, SpaceX's founder founder and CEO Elon Musk revealed the company's design for its next generation deep space transportation system, a huge rocket spaceship combo known as Starship. Starship will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever built when it comes online, Musk has said. Ultimately, he envisions hundreds of Starships landing a million people on Mars in the coming decades. A fully stacked Starship orbital test flight is expected before the end of this year. How do you feel about NASA after this embarrassing event? Are you excited for SpaceX's Starship to make its debut in the coming weeks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed today's episode, please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you won't miss out on the next exciting episode of Alpha Tech. From all of us here, we hope to see you again next time.